so when we left off, we had created this lovely text effect. It's brilliant. I absolutely love it. But what this is, it's an After Effects round robin dy dynamic linked uh, project. And we can't do anything with it. If we select this and come up to Essential Graphics, Edit, you can't do anything. In this chapter, I'm going to show you how to change all that. And this, I promise you, this will really set you up for any graphics you want to make that you feel you would remake. If you've got clients that you want to kind of set a kind of whole graphic style and then just reuse with projects, or say you run a, a YouTube channel and you want to set these things up, this is how you do it. So let's go back to our After Effects um, project because this is our starting position. And we're going to open something in After Effects that we've never opened before. I'm just going to go back to my selection tool and we need to open a window. You know, like we've got here, we've got info and audio and preview. Those three, by the way, I've never opened in my life, nor have I ever opened libraries. But what we need to open is window and essential graphics. So if you haven't got it open, open it now. And now we've got a new window. What does this mean? Okay. This is brilliant. Honestly, this is brilliant. So uh, we need to select a composition that this is going to read from, which in this case is blur text effect linked. So let's drop down and it's the only composition in here. So boom, let's go. Now we want to title this. So this title will be searchable when we export it in here in essential graphics. So let's call it something that it kind of resembles. And I call it the blur text effect. So let's just say blur text. And I'm actually going to call this in and out. Hit enter. The reason why I've called it in and out is because you know it's animating in and animating out. Good. Does that make sense? Crack it. Finally, before we go any further, we need to set a poster time. And what this is, is as you can see right now, we've got black. And if we were in Premiere Pro and starting to search, you'd need to be able to see something. All these have had a poster time set on them. Remember when we downloaded this? We downloaded this guy and we're playing this uh, in the peach oven thing. I know we've come a long way since then. If you've watched every single um, chapter and you've learned something, uh, feel proud. Just just take a moment and feel proud because you've, you've made it this far. Uh, so you must have... You must have some learning in there now. I hope, I hope you've got out of this what you, uh, what you, what you wanted to. Anyway, let's go back here. Uh, enough of the soppy stuff. And we need to set our poster time. So you find your playhead somewhere which kind of represents it. I'm actually going to put it around here because it kind of gives me that effect as well. So it kind of sells it to my head that, oh, okay. Yeah. It's the one that does that, not just that, which is just, uh, it's just some random piece of text. So I'm going to, maybe do it to there. So it kind of gives me a selling. I'm just going to hit set poster time. And that kind of, maybe bring it in a little bit more if it's all on its own. Set poster time. Yeah. Okay. So that kind of tells me, ah, yeah, yeah. With that blur text uh, and that, yeah, I know what I'm doing. So what do we do? Well, uh, what we now need to think about the kind of things that we, we would want to change uh, in this, if it were a template. And the first thing with it being text would be the text. So let's start as we mean to go on. Uh, I'm going to do this once and then we'll go cherry picking and I'll show you an easy way to do this. Uh, but first and foremost, we're going to drop down this and all these are actually already open, but we have source text and that source text is what's in here. And source text is definitely something we're going to want to change. So what we do is we grab it, we drag it and we drop it. And now we have our source text. It, it labels the value what's actually here. So we're going to change this and we're going to say um, text and then just click out. I also want to be able to edit the properties. If you were doing this for a client and you didn't want them to change anything, you didn't want them to change the size or the font or the font width or anything, you would just literally leave it as that. However, we want to be able to ed edit the properties. So I'm going to enable custom font selection, I'm going to enable font size adjustments, and I'm going to enable faux styles. Leave it as that. 
That's how we want. Press OK. And watch up here once we press OK. Boom. We now have the ability to change our text and styles. Look, remember when we toggled this on and off? Watch. Finished. Changed. Come back. Also, it's changed. So this now is perfectly rigged up. Where have we seen this before? Yes, you're absolutely right. If we go into Premiere Composer, just go for Essential Typography, drag anything in anywhere, click here. Look, we have the same, well, pretty much the same. They've added other things, but we've got the same. So we're now still, we're now starting to build what we're doing. And there are also some things that you're not going to want to put into this essential graphics panel to change, such as things that we've keyframed, because that could really just open up a whole host of problems. Uh, however, because you've made it, once you then start testing it, you can then decide other things. Um, so yeah, we'll cover that as well. So we've, we've twirled down and we found source text, uh, and we've put that in and we've allowed it to edit, edit the properties. But what else can we put in here? Well, rather than going down and thinking, Oh, would I want that dragging in and seeing if it would allow, you can actually solo supported properties. And by clicking that, what that will do. In fact, let me just close that up so you can see it properly. Uh, let's close up that and solo support property. In fact, I'm going to get rid of that piece of video because we don't need that now. Um, solo supported properties, click that. And now every single thing that you can see can be added to your essential graphics. So what else do we think could be added into here? Well, I'm thinking the color. So here's the fill and stroke. So maybe drag that in. Okay. That doesn't look right. And no, it isn't because, and this is a crazy thing in, in After Effects is that the fill isn't contained in the text. The fill or the color of a text, should I say, is not contained, contained in the text. It's in the character bit over here. And this is still linking to over here. And we can't grab this and put it in here. I know it's a bit of a pain. So what we need to do is we actually need to add a fill to this layer. I know it's a pain. It's even more of a pain if you had to go up to effects and presets and search for it, but we don't do we? because with that selected, we just hit control and space bar and it brings up our effects console. If you haven't touched on that, don't forget, you need to get this down. It's free link is in the course outline. It's brilliant. Uh, so we're just going to uh, search for fill and we want to apply a fill. So click fill and now it's turned red. Hmm. Why has it done that? Well, because we've added a fill right here in our effects controls for this bad boy. If we hit solo properties again, and then solo properties again, if we search for our fill, it's now down here. Good. I know it's frustrating. Uh, however, if we grab this color and drag it into here, we've got our fill color, but it's red. Don't worry. So we're going to put we're going to rename this as text color. And I'm actually going to use a, a U in there because I'm English United Kingdom. And then we can set this back to white. What does that do? Well, that does two things. It first takes it back to what we wanted it to, and also confirms that this is working in our essential graphics panel. Good. Anything else? Well, there's a number of things we can do. Uh, how about the position of this text? definitely want to going to be able to affect that position. Well, we can change the size, but it doesn't change our position, does it? No, no, no. So let's find that. If we come back up here. Okay. We're in the world. That's all that. Where does our transfer form happen? It happens right at the bottom. Grab our position and drag that into here. And we just change this and say text position, press enter. And now we know that we are all good. We can change it from side to side. Should we wish we may, when we're actually in this and we using this in a project, we may think, Oh, I wonder maybe this would work well as a lower third. Okay. Well, we could drag that down here, drag that down here. 
Well, actually, it's a little bit too big for a lower third. Ah, don't worry. I've put the text size in here. So we can do that and do that, bearing in mind that it tracks out. But having done that, take off those title action safe. And all of a sudden, it turns into a lower third. Don't worry, it's only turning off there because we're pre-rendering and it's only going that far. It's really handy when it does that. But if we bring it a little bit further, cracking. Good. So I'm going to undo that and undo again because I don't want it there. I want it back in the center and good. Happy? We happy so far. Good. Let's carry on. So we've got our text done. We've got our font done. How about, well, do we want to give an option for maybe a drop shadow? Let's say if this was on, uh, well, actually, if we come back to the uh, Premiere Pro and look on here, let's get rid of that now. Could this benefit from maybe a bit of drop shadow? Well, yeah, I guess it could. And giving it the option could help. So what do we do? Well, first we need to apply a drop shadow. Let's go to uh, toggle this just so we can see. Let's go new solid actually and let's just go white toggle that off and put that below don't have to have this um but we can't see anything and that kind of helps us so i'm going to select this i'm going to control and spacebar and i'm going to search for drop shadow drop that on there okay that's now starting to work however we want this in here hmm can we well let's find out let's select the text solo supported properties and do we have the drop shadow in here keep coming yeah we do grab the drop shadow drop it in and nothing happens that's because it's only these bits that we can affect so how do we get that in okay well let's just grab the first thing here drop shadow color good we can do that drop shadow color Drop shadow, shadow color. Yeah, okay, that works. I'm going to change that. I don't know why, but it just, it, it offends me. We're then going to change the opacity. So we're going to say drop shadow opacity, drop shadow direction. Yeah, drop shadow distance and drop shadow softness. I know that's a lot for the drop shadow, but it's the only way of getting all of these in here. But that's fine for me. And if I now press save there, if I now get rid of this white solid, can't see the drop shadow now, but if we go back to here, we now have the ability, if we just close out this for now, and maybe size this up a little bit so we can see, do we have a drop shadow? Yeah, we kind of do. We can't edit it yet, but it kind of works. Maybe if we turn back on this white solid and affect it a little bit, let's see if all these are working. Okay, yeah, that seems to be working. Maybe soften it up a little bit. That seems to be working opacity take that all the way up that seems to be working control and s and the beauty of doing it this way is the fact that it helps us oh yeah we've got the white solid on as well haven't we <laughs> control and s it helps us work out if it's actually going to work in what we need it and that yeah it seems to be working absolutely fine in fact with that drop shadow it really kind of sets it off a little bit more doesn't it yeah it just makes it stand out a little bit more good happy with that so let's um i'm just going to undo 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 i'm going to keep on doing until this goes okay and uh, control shift and z to redo the last thing uh happy with that and yeah that all works for me the opacity obviously will work really well as well because if you don't want to drop shadow on it in when you're using this in your project in Premiere Pro, well, you just take the opacity to zero and it will turn it off. You know that. However, if this is going out to somebody, what you could do is you could click in here and say 0% for off. Uh, yeah, I did a capital for a number. <laughs> Does anyone else hold down shift when they press numbers if it's the beginning of something and think, oh yeah, I didn't want that. So 0% for off. So that's just giving a little bit of notes to whoever may be using this in the future or to remind yourself. Oh yeah, yeah, I meant to think that. Mm. So yeah, helps. Control S, just going to save that. I know it's almost like a, it's a natural reflex, isn't it for me? Uh, we could also add the anchor point if we wanted to into here. I've never really felt the need to do it. 
Um, but everything seems to be absolutely fine. Would we want to, would we want to change the seed amount? Because obviously we've changed the seed amount in here. So it goes out in a different thing. Well, no, because this is already keyframed. If we drag this into here now, it's keyframed and the keyframes will be ignored. Press OK, undo. So you don't, you can't really do that. And um, there, there are ways to kind of get around it with sliders and stuff. But I mean, that is like beyond, beyond the needs that I've ever had. Um, but yeah, I'm happy with that. So let's come back down here. Let's turn off the white solid and good. Control save and it should be in Premiere Pro. Shouldn't, should it? No, it shouldn't because we're not there. We need to get it into Premiere Pro. And how do we do that? Well, it's actually a lot simpler than you may think. We'll just close this up so we're not being absolutely bombarded. I'm going to get rid of that white solid because we don't need it. So we've got text, we've got text color, text position, drop shadow if we need it. Everything's good. We're happy with that. There's one thing I've got in mind that we may need to change, but it's not currently supported. So I'll show you a workaround until that is supported. When you get this, it might be supported, but we've been calling out for it in the community for a number of years. However, don't worry about that right now. We have our name set. We set that right at the beginning, but if you haven't already, it'll be saying untitled. You need to set that. You just need to. Um, it wouldn't bother you in the first time, but you'd be searching for untitled in Premiere Pro. And not only that, but when you set up another one, if you didn't rename it, it would overwrite the first one. So let's not get into that. So, okay, we are here done. We're ready. So we just save it. If you don't save it, it will prompt you to save this project and we export motion graphics template. Now pay attention. This is important because we want to be warned if the growth motion graphics template uses fonts that are not available from Adobe fonts. What does that mean? Well, you've seen in the past when we've gone into uh, here, let's just open again the essential graphics tablet, uh, tab even or window in Premiere Pro. <laughs> um, and you can see, you see these T things here that tells me that it, we've got fonts that aren't currently installed in this machine. However, we, if we grab this down, it doesn't automatically bring in the fonts. Well, it will tell me, ah, oh, yeah, we don't support this. So you'd have to go and find that font somewhere else. It's no biggie, but it's good to know. And it's good to be told, especially if you're sending this motion graphics template to somebody else. Also warn me if After Effects needs to be installed in order to customize this motion graphics template. Remember right at the beginning when we started playing with stuff and I said, you need After Effects installed to be able to run this. You don't necessarily have to have opened it, but you do need it installed. That's literally uh, just a heads up. So you don't get something into Premiere Pro. If you haven't got After Effects installed, you will have, because obviously you got this far in the, uh, in the course. But if, again, if you're sending this motion graphics template to somebody else, or you're just taking it onto another computer just to run, if you haven't got After Effects installed and it needs After Effects installed, you'll get a pop-up just saying, guys, you need After Effects. It's cracking. It just helps. Um, and warn me, the last one, warn me if there are text controls that cannot be edited with the Premiere Pro type tool. That's fine. The Premiere Pro type tool, don't know why they haven't changed that, but the Premiere Pro type tool is what it used to be called. It's now called Essential Graphics, um, which comes in line with Essential Graphics. We just want that. That's all we need. All done. Keywords. We can add some keywords um, just in case maybe you don't remember the words or we don't remember the title even blur text in and out uh so you could put blurring um when i first thought of that scene i thought of wilderness um this is purely for your own memory really um i would say um i don't know landscape that kind of thing if you search for those things also in essential graphics, these will come up as well. It just kind of helps really. Um, you could say uh, uh, in and out, that does crack in. You get the picture, press okay. And now it starts to verify and the following one font were not synced from Adobe, Nexa Lite. So that's one of the first, although you could get a warning from what it says here uh, in Premiere Pro, this is giving us the warning heads up. By the way, 
The font that you're using right here could not be synced from Adobe. That's fine. Nexa Lite is one that I've downloaded. I love the Nexa family. Uh, and it's uh, the, the Nexa family of fonts, by the way. There's not a family that I know that whose surname is Nexa. Uh, but yeah, I love the, I love the Nexa font family. So this is the one that we're using, but that's cool. It just gives you the heads up. By the way, if you're using this on another machine, again, that doesn't have Nexa Lite installed, Adobe is not going to be able to activate that font for you. You'll have to go and find it yourself. But remember, we also have the ability to change the fonts. So if whoever's using this doesn't have Nexa, doesn't have time uh, to get Nexa down or doesn't have an internet connection or whatever, they can change it to whatever font they want. Good. That's why it's important to allow that the font and the style to be changed. Press OK. And that's done. I'm not even going to restart anything. I just know it's called blur text and I'm going to go over to here. I'm going to delete that after effects template and let's just search blur, press enter. And there is our motion graphics template. If I press I on here, this also gives us any information. It shows us that the duration is seven seconds. The file size, cracking, doesn't matter. Fonts, next select, and the keywords. And you can add more keywords here if you wanted to. It would only infect, it would only infect, it would only affect the actual installation in this uh, uh, version of Premiere Pro. It wouldn't affect the original, um, but it would help you. So say landscape, we put landscape in before, didn't we? So if we come in here and we type landscape and press enter we have oh we used this before do you remember when we used this why would that be landscape oh because it's landscape <laughs> rather than portrait uh, and we have now our motion graphics template so let's test it and see if it works so we grab it right out of the essential graphics and we drop it where we want it done and now we've selected it and look what we've got everything that we added in. So we've got our text that we can change. Come with me. Doesn't update here. Click out. It does update. By the way, if you really want everything to update as you're typing, uh, remember we put in um, Premiere Composer before. Well, the thing is your motion graphics template can also work in Premiere Composer. Look, I've got essential graphics here and this is all this, but Premier Composer is here. And the beauty of Premier Composer that I absolutely love is if you type now, um, watch, see, it's actually, and they pointed at the screen then, you can't see my finger, it actually starts to put it up here. So let's go away. Boom, done. And I do want that, uh, that drop shadow. And obviously this is great now because we've got this here. We can add that drop shadow. I'm just going to come back to essential graphics just in case you haven't installed Premiere Composer. And if you haven't, why not? Seriously, the vast majority of the stuff that I've used in this whole course has been from Premiere Composer and, uh, sorry, the vast majority of the stuff that I've used from Premiere Composer in this course is completely 100% free. So if you haven't got it right by, if you haven't got it by now, just do it, go and get it. Um, okay, 100% opacity, going to change that distance. And we can actually affect, it's taken a while to catch up, but we can affect the distance of our drop shadow. See it? Boom. Let's take it a little bit there. Maybe add the softness. A bit. And say you get it in here and you think, oh, I don't really like it now. I don't really like the font. I want to change the font. Fair enough. What do you want? Do we want Norwester? I just selected no Wester. I just couldn't help myself. Honestly, I just couldn't help myself. Oh, why is it gone to Museo? What is Museo? That, oh, that's quite a nice font, isn't it? That's lovely, but it's not the one I selected. I went for no Wester and I want no Wester. There we go. Let's go away. Uh, if we want to change things, what do we want? Do we want to change the size? We could drag that up a little bit. Okay. I've just pre-rendered this because I want to kind of, I want to, I want to make this point because I think it's really important. Although I would like to make this point first. Norwester works really well with this, <laughs> with this scene. I think Norwester works with everything. However, let's start to kind of finesse what we're doing because first off, I don't think that 
we really want the actual number of the text because obviously we're at 363 now and our slider is almost all the way up. If we wanted to go much higher, we'd probably have to click in and start typing. And that kind of, well, it's not really what I want. Also text position, it's a bit random. You know, it's, it's, not kind of, it's not kind of the numbers that we want. It's not 2048 by 1080, which is obviously 4K. Uh, if this was 1080, we'd be 960, 540. Um, and it just, it just doesn't look clean for me. And for me, if we're going to all the, I don't know, the trouble to do this, I think it's important to do it right. And if you do it right the first time, it then saves any problems going forward. So let's go back to our After Effects and let's tweak this. And that's the beauty of making this yourself because you can. Let's go back to After Effects. And what do I want to do first? Well, I don't want this because this is just annoying, the size and all that. So first I'm going to get rid of this. So I'm going to edit properties and I'm going to get rid of enable font size adjustment. Boom, done. We've got rid of that slider. Also, text position. It doesn't really look quite right. It, it, it does, doesn't feel nice to me. So we're going to change that as well. So we're going to grab that and we're going to right click. No, we're not. We're going to select it and we're just going to press delete. And that removes it from the list. Bearing in mind that we want to kind of get whatever we're going to bring back in. We're going to bring it in here, but let's, let's, let's do that. So what we want to do is we want to con control this, but not within its own controls. Does that make sense? We put in the source text and we said, yeah, okay, we want to size up the size and we included that, but it didn't look right. Also, we dragged in the position from here, from P, and that just didn't feel right because it's at 2047 and all that. And the thing is, maybe this isn't actually right. If I reset that, it's brought it up a little bit, but let's say actually that the default position is here and that's where you want it to be. Well, you don't want to be reading all this. So this is where what we're going to add now will just make it cleaner. Let me undo that and undo it again. Let's just take it back to where it was, which was 2047.4 by 1106.4. Cracking. Let's create a null. Remember what a null does? A null does nothing unless you put something to it. Remember we created nulls before when we've been doing tracking and a null can control or be sent information to. Well, that's what we're going to do here. We're going to, going to control. So we're going to go new, uh, sorry, any empty space here, right click, new and null. Where is it? There you go, null object. And as always, by default, the anchor point is in the top left and the anchor point is the center of the composition. I just like a null to be clean. So we set the anchor point here. Don't forget you can control and double click up here. But if you have the anchor point mover, another thing that comes completely free with Animation Composer, which is, all say it together, the After Effects version of Mr. Horse Premiere Composer. So we're going to click that and get it right to the center. Then we're going to come to a line and press center, making sure that composition is dropped down, not selection. We're going to press center and middle or align vertically and horizontally. Cracking. Done. Happy with that? Is this definitely in the center? Yes, it is. Is that in the center? Cool. So we're now all cracking and ready. Now, what do we do? Have a think, what are we going to do with the null? Exactly. I hope you said we're going to parent the null to the into the wild. Or did you say pick whip? Because pick whip's always good. You can either drop this down and say null, or we can grab this little pick whip, both under parent and link, and select the null and let go. So now our null is controlling our text layer. And now if we drop this down and transform, we now have more position scale and all those options. And not only that, we have 100% and our position is clean for me. So let's grab the position and drag that up here above the drop shadow, but below, below the text color. Boom, null position one. We're going to change this to text position and press enter. We're then going to grab the scale and put that above the position. And we're going to put, we're going to lie and say font size, press enter. So now 
this is 100% and we can go bigger than 100% or smaller than 100%. But 100% is right in the center. So we're not having to worry with all this anymore. This hasn't changed yet because we haven't overwritten it. Bear with. Let's come back to here. Let's just check our font size has changed. That's absolutely fine. Has our text position. That works now as well. Happy with that. So now what do we do? Because we've changed and already exported motion graphics template. Well, all we need to do is overwrite what we've already exported. And to do that, and I'm not going to save this, so I'll show you what happens. You go to export motion graphics template. It will tell you that the project needs to be saved first. Do you want to save it? Stupid question in my, my mind, just automatically save it and start it. But yes, let's save it. I guess it stops you overwriting. It kind of gives you a little, oh, hold on. Did you really want to overwrite it? So we've got all this. Boom, boom, boom. Sadly, the keywords aren't kept from the last time. Uh, I'm not going to put them in again, but they weren't kept. It's a shame. Uh, but you just put your keywords in there again because you may have made a new version of this. You see, say this was a different one and all this. You just change the name, export it out. And that way it wouldn't overwrite. It would be an additional. Uh, and so, yeah. That's, I guess that's why it's asking you, do you want to save? So we're going to get all the compatibility warnings. We're going to be fine that when we press OK, it's going to say the file already exists. Do you want to replace it? Because there's a, it already is picked up. There's a file saying blur text in and out. Well, yes, we do want to replace it. And again, it's telling us that Nexolite is not an Adobe fault. That's absolutely fine. Fault, font. Press OK. Nothing happens. However, in the background, everything happens. So we come back into here, we click it and nothing's changed. Well, that's because this is the old version. However, we can't search for the old version now because the old version has changed. I'll prove it to you. Come back to browse. Let's search for blur again and drag this into the side. And if we go here now, we're now back to that original uh, font and we have our font size in this order and text position like this. But if we click this other one, it's still got the old version. Now let's just say for argument's sake that this, uh, this whole thing create, uh, contains something that has changed fundamentally, like maybe a color or, um, a, a text, uh, a text font and you need to change them all. You need to change everything. And you've got like maybe six or seven in one project. Well, we can do that. Let's just duplicate that for now. Uh, this is the new one. These are the old ones. And we want to replace these old ones with the new one. Hmm. How do we do that? Well, it's really quite simple. Let me just delete that for now. And just to highlight, just to show you, it is the old version. Obviously, we've got the text going up here. If we go to this one that we've duplicated. And again, we've got the text sizing up here and it's just not right. Well, let's come back to browse, search for blur. And there's our blur text in and out. And what we're going to do is we're going to drag this holding down the alt key. I'm going to drag it on top of here, alt onto another one over rights. We're going to let that go. And it's going to come up with this. Do you want to replace all other instances of this graphic in all sequences with the new template? So this is saying every single other instance that you have with this, because this has been overwritten, what do you want to do? Do you want to keep those, all those others as they were, or do you want to update them with this new version? Well, the, for instance, that I gave you was yes, we need to replace them all because the client wasn't happy and wanted to change it. So we just hit yes. And now this version has everything we needed. Although, and I don't know if this is a, a glitch in the system, it still has the ability to change the font size here. And I think that's because it already had it in. If we bring um, this in here and drag that this in, a brand new version doesn't have the slider. This version does have the slider. However, this version, as well as having the slider to change the font size, also has this to change the font size. So we could make it huge with this size. Um, 
all the way up and then bring it back down with this slider. It kind of contradicts a little bit, but yeah, you know what I'm saying. Um, but it gets everything to the point that you need it to. Most importantly though, let me just undo that. What didn't change? Well, this is a brand new version and this has Nexa light. However, I dragged in over this one and while it changed everything, yeah, okay, it kept the font size there. What it did do is it obeyed the fact that in this version, in this instance of this motion graphics template, I had changed the font. Not only had I changed the font, I'd also changed the text. Because if you remember what we're being outputting is into the wild, but I changed this text to let's go away. So it, it had added the new stuff as it were, but it had kept the fact that I wanted drop shadow at a hundred percent. It had kept the distance and the softness and the text change and also the font. And that's why it's a motion graphics template that we will create initially and then edit from as we go. This levels up everything does motion graphics templates and helps you have consistency across videos when they're all maybe the same kind of a series, or as I said before, the same, the same channel uh, on YouTube or Instagram account or anything like that. But essentially what we've done is we've created this. If I just press O there and pre-render, we've created this motion graphics template, which we can change up the text, the size, uh, the color even, and we can create literally anything that we want from this one thing. If we just change that out now and go here and say, uh, change this to the great beyond. Um, this is still actually capital, so it doesn't really matter. So we'll just let that kind of catch up. I would love my system to catch up. I dare you, I double dare you. I'm gonna change the text color to maybe a blue. I'm gonna leave, uh, no, oh, you're back in the room now, are you? Uh, I'm gonna leave the opacity, uh, the opacity at 100% for, um, for our drop shadow. I'm actually gonna change that to maybe a little bit of a lighter blue, maybe like this, the great beyond. And all of a sudden with just a few clicks, just duplicating this and continuing to edit it within Premiere Pro, We've got two instances of it. And if I put these back to back and play them, oh, brilliant. Of course, it was over different video footage, so we need to pre-render it. But the most important thing to remember is that if we duplicated this, and if it was still the original After Effects Dynamic Link project in and out, if we then duplicated it and changed it, both instances will be changed because you're duplicating the thing that we're actually changing in After Effects. However, because we've exported the motion graphics template and brought it into here, not only can we create one version, one instance of this motion graphics template, but we can create as many different instances as we want. And that has got to be worth the time taken to create it in the first place. Because now I have this to use wherever I want for whatever I want, not only that, but I can send this to somebody else. So another editor who's working on the same series or for the same client, and they've got everything set up. So you don't have to be saying to them, oh, by the way, the font size is this, the text is this, the duration is this, the effect that you need to use to bring it on is this, and the effect you need to bring it out is this. You just send them this Mogurt, this motion graphics template. They install it onto their machine. Everything is the same.